हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम बैक टू माय चैनल एंड टुडे विल बी टॉकिंग अबाउट लाइक व्हाट हैपेंस बियॉन्ड मॉडल ट्रेनिंग इज इट ओनली डिप्लॉयमेंट दैट इज लेफ्ट और एनी अदर इंपॉर्टेंट आस्पेक्ट्स आल्सो वी नीड टू टेक केयर फॉर एग्जांपल वी ट्रेन द मॉडल वी डिप्लॉय द मॉडल एंड शुड वी लेट इट रनिंग और वी ऑल्सो नीड टू मॉनिटर सर्टन थिंग्स राइट और इज इट ओनली मॉनिटरिंग और देर आर मेनी एनी अदर थिंग विच वी नीड टू टेक केयर so those all things we are going to talk about in this uh, video so today i uh, will discuss uh, architecturally each an important component of incomplete uh, uh, model life cycle when i say model life cycle so scope is not till uh, the training and deployment it is beyond that okay so let's understand like which component is involved and what is stages so let's start okay so what after model training basically so uh, like uh, to do model training you need a raw data so from some data warehouse we are reading the raw data okay and then we are doing certain pre processing steps okay sometimes transformer data cleaning feature engineering all those things i am uh, assuming you will be doing in this box okay after that what will happen we have a final set of features okay so once we are like ready with the data so now here so one important aspects here i am going to tell you like feature store okay so what happens uh, why we need feature store okay and uh, so see let's understand one uh, scenario so guys we have trained the model and then what happens we deployed the model okay and then uh, when a uh, live data is coming so over the period of time there is a possibilities that uh, the statistical properties of live data got changed okay now it is not exactly similar to the training data and then if we directly feed this new data to the model which is trained on old data then of course it is very obvious that whatever output model is producing those will not be accurate enough right so that's where it is very important to check the uh, like all the or i would say it is very important to uh, serve the uh, live data which is similar to the training data and how you will make sure right so to avoid that scenario we uh, have feature store okay so that is one uh, important aspects of having feature store in place okay so normally in a machine learning uh, model training we don't uh, use feature store so that's where i said in this video i am going to tell you all important aspects which generally we don't follow okay so this is one first important aspects so for to uh, have the feature store what all we need basically we need to define a, like a feature definition like which will contain the metadata of all your important features which you are going to use uh, in the model okay so next step is like we will create a feature definition so it will have all the important features metadata okay so now uh, once you have feature definitions ready with you so what you will do you will deploy those features or i would say like you will register those features okay so uh, for feature deployment or feature registration there are different tools available in the market which provide like uh, uh, feature store property feature store uh, uh, functionalities so um, like uh, one of the most widely tool used uh, by the industry is feast okay that is developed by google okay so uh, so that you can use but uh, you can use any other you are free to use okay but one more thing guys let me uh, like quickly tell you here okay so it's not always you need to use feature store during your uh, modeling phase okay so uh, in this video of course i am not going to tell you that in next video i'll tell but there are scenarios when you should use feature store uh, within your modeling phase and there are scenarios when it is overkill it is over engineering okay so it's not every time you should have uh, feature store in place okay so uh, let's discuss that in separate feature so in this uh, complete architecture so i am involving that as a one important aspect okay so now you have feature definition so uh, you created the metadata file and then we need to register and deploy so for that if you are using fish then there is a command fish apply to do that one okay so using that uh, it what it will do it will register the features in the offline store so that's where you will read the historical data okay and uh, by reading the historical data you train the model and once you are uh, done with model training so inside this model training phase i am assuming you will do all your model validation all hyper parameter tuning everything okay 
So if you need to go back and do something within your data set and again come with the tuning on you train the model, right? So these complete steps are involved during model training phase, okay? Once you're satisfied with the model and then you register that in the model registry, okay? And model is registered. Now what next? The model is registered. Now we will start model serving by deploying it, right? So what happens? So for that, uh, when you deploy the model, it will serve on new data, right? Not the training data. So for that, uh, what feature store provides? Online store, okay? So whenever new data is coming in offline store, uh, you need to push that to uh, the online store. If you are using fish, then of course it will, uh, you can use do fish materialize. So inside fish, there is a process called materialization. So that pushes that all new features based on timestamp to the online store, okay? So I have created a detailed video on Feast. So if you want to you know how to use Feast, how to install and everything. So you can refer that, I will give in the description box, okay? So now your uh, new features are available uh, within your online store, okay? So now from here, uh, model serving will start. So model serving is a fancy name, but what it does basically, it needs a model as a input, it needs a new data as a input, and then it produce a model output. The, the, as simple as that, okay? So we have a model serving. So see from here, it will uh, read the model from model registry and from online store, it will read the new data. Okay. And it is start producing the output. So now once you have the output, there are two aspects. Again, you will uh, directly start consuming this output by attaching a consumer directly to it. Or what you also you can do, you can uh, start saving this output. I would say saving model output is very important. Okay. I'm going to tell you the uh, reasoning behind that, okay? So now uh, another thing what you can do, you save the model uh, output first and then start consuming it, okay? So both ways are possible. It depends on uh, use case to use case, scenarios to scenarios basis, okay? So anything you can opt. But why storing model output is important? Because uh, you want to make sure over the period of time, like your model is consistently performing good. Right, so how you will make sure for that you need to uh, somehow validate model output, model performance. How you will validate? There are multiple ways. Okay, so here at this step, how you will do? Okay, so uh, what you need to do? Like suppose today's model is producing something. So whatever it is predicting today, so that real value you won't have today, but sometime later you will have real values. Right, what model is? predicting today, right? So those real values are known as ground truth values. So once ground truth values are available, so that time you will fetch the uh, model output from some databases and then you start comparing with real values, okay? And if it is like uh, not much deviation or you set a threshold, okay, if it is model output is deviating beyond this threshold, okay? Then what you will do? You need to retrain the model, okay? So you retrain, the model again you say uh, for retraining uh, uh, data is coming from offline store and once retraining you just store in model registry and then complete uh, same uh, cycle will follow okay from model registry you will uh, take the model from online store you take the new data and you start outputting okay so this is uh, known as like how to uh, check validate model performance on time to time basis when your uh, ground truth or real values are available Okay, so this is one aspect. Another, what uh, like uh, uh, how you can uh, do real time model monitoring because see, real values or ground truth are not available real time at the time when model is predicting something. You don't have real values, but still you cannot wait three months or six months later to validate model performance, right? For that, if model is not performing good, so for those next three months you will get the wrong output, right? So for that, there should be some mechanism which can do real-time model monitoring. That is very, very important, right? So that's where next thing could be real-time drift detector. So there are certain statistical methods which do uh, like drift detection. So this is another important aspects or I would say very, very important component of machine learning life cycle, okay? Which generally we uh, like uh, miss basically, okay? So that's where you have online data and then you need to write certain detectors here. Okay. So in next upcoming videos, I will talk one by one each detector. So there are certain offline detectors. There are certain online detectors, but ultimately they all follow one or other statistical methods. 
but there are also certain classifier detectors which also do the same job okay but slight changes are there based on situation to situation we need to use one okay but today uh, you just understand architecturally like where it fits basically okay so you have online store you new data so uh, here uh, you just schedule this detector like uh, when you have a certain batch of data uh, group of data available then for that you just run the, this detector and check if the distribution or statistical properties of this new data are changed over the period of time okay if there is a change or there is a, a decent amount of deviation observed from these drifts, okay, then what you do, you again trigger the retraining of the model. So this here, it of course, if uh, the moment you involve new component within your machine learning lifecycle, it incurs some cost, right? It re, uh, it requires some computational power, some uh, CPU resources, right? So for that, it depends on like what basis on what uh, like frequency you need to schedule. Of course, you need to schedule for every new prediction for if you're doing batch prediction. So for every new batch prediction, you can first check if your data is deviated. If it is not deviated, then you do the prediction. If it is deviated, then uh, you do the retraining and then uh, again, if you have done retraining, then of course uh, it is perfectly fine and you are satisfied with the model output and then you start predicting from in the new data, right? Or if you are thinking, okay, uh, uh, your new data is almost similar to the training data and in uh, maybe we, there is a need to check every month, monthly basis, weekly basis or six monthly basis based on scenario, you can schedule this, okay? But you can schedule on like uh, every prediction. So that's where it is known as real-time drift detection. Right, real time, almost real time, you can do this uh, drift detection for every prediction you can do, right? So that's where uh, uh, drift detectors are in place and you uh, uh, do the drift detection and then uh, if it is drifted, yes, then you do model training and save the model in registry and then from there you start serving. So this is the complete flow and important aspects of model uh, like machine learning life cycle. So that the first one we understood like feature store. Of course, I will also talk in next videos specifically for feature store like when to use feature store and when it is overkill. Okay. Another thing is like model performance monitoring. <clears throat> We talked here, but uh, there is a <coughs> sorry, there is a challenge here. Like real time values are not available uh, today. They will be available sometime in future, and until we cannot wait uh, uh, and we cannot rely on these uh, uh, output values because they cannot be uh, accurate enough. So that's where here also we have challenge. So that's where uh, another uh, important component comes: real time drift, drift detector. Okay. So every time you are getting new uh, online uh, new data from online store, so you can do batch by batch or for any new uh, record you can do the drift detector so that's where like uh, offline and online detectors comes in place if for every new record if you want to uh, perform this that's where like uh, classifier comes in place online drift detectors comes in place okay so we'll again talk about in detail of every aspects in upcoming videos okay so hope uh, you understood uh, this uh, uh, complete architecture and if you have any doubt in understanding in any uh, component you just drop me a comment i love to uh, reply okay and that's where i also learn okay so let's learn together so that's all uh, for today's video and uh, uh, if you like this then please don't forget to uh, subscribe my channel and hit the bell icon and of course share within your community so that's how you can support me so your support is very much needed so that's it thank you very much